Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Hi, Valder. Hey, Jamil Cunningham from Yonkers, New York. Thank you for joining me here on the Valder Beauty Show. Thanks for having me. Well, I want to talk with you about A&E's Night Watch Nation. You know, I'm so impressed because it's produced by Dick Wolf, one of my favorite. But the, it, it just has all the makings of everything you want to see on TV. Tell us about it. So Night Watch Nation is just pretty much following crews across the country, you know, that works at night, EMTs and paramedics, just covering what we do on the overnight, you know. It's going to be a lot of interesting stuff. I understand it follows uh, EMTs in Yonkers, New York, Austin, Texas, Tucson, Arizona, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So we get a great mixture of what's going on in the city. Yep, and um, I'm a part of the Yonkers uh, section of the show. How is Yonkers different from Austin? Or is, is the drama the same? I think EMS in general, we deal with the same natures. On, you know, I, I think for the most part, the nature of our job is the same. We deal with the same call types, so to speak. Uh, and um, I guess people vary from areas to areas. But um, I think for the most part, it's common calls, common complaints and stuff like that. But, you know, as far as the people itself go, I'm sure that's going to be a little bit different. Okay, so there's over 10 exhilarating episodes. You guys, the EMTs, you guys tackle emergency on every level. Give me some of the things that you guys tackle as an EMT. Because we only mostly see you guys when we're driving and we hear the sirens and we have to pull over to the right. We're just looking, we're on the outside looking in unless something happens to us personally. So give us an insider view. So, you know, uh... Us as EMTs and paramedic, we pretty much respond to emergent situations. It varies, you know, from shootings, stabbings, MV MVAs, assaults, whatever the case may be. We pretty much, you know, bring the emergency room to the streets. You know, the only thing we're missing really is just blood work and an x-ray machine. But we pretty much bring um, all the different treatments and stuff like that to the streets. And we can get the job done until we get you to the hospital for further you know, treatment. Um, we have a lot of interesting things coming. You know, we deal with stuff, you know, a lot of drug overdose situations. And, you know, we had recently a car of teenagers that flipped over. And it was a pretty horrifying scene. It was a little bit heartfelt. But, um, you know, to see the stuff and to see the difference we make, it makes a lot of difference. It being, being there, being able to help, you know, stopping it at the time we get there and just Preventing it from getting worse, pretty much, you know, and get them to the right place at the right time, you know, that's optimal. I've got a Facebook post, and my poster would like to know, how do you feel about people that, who are in your care, say, how do you feel about them, or do you just do your job, is what they're asking. You know what, um, for me personally, I have never been on the receiving end of, a, of um, first responders. You know, I've never been a patient uh, per se, but what I always envision is how I would like to be treated. If I was that patient, if I was on that stretcher, you know, if I was involved in a motor vehicle collision and I was badly injured, I try to put myself in that person's position and the way I would want to be treated is pretty much how I treat that person. And it goes a far way, you know, you never know, it could be your family member. And so I always treat that patient like it's either me or one of my own. You get what I'm saying? And then with that approach, it doesn't, it's, it's no longer a job. It's, it's you doing what you love and it's your passion and the care you have for people. And each and every call that I get, that's how I treat the person. That's how I approach it. And then it no longer becomes a job, you know, and it, it, it feels a lot different. Well, let me ask you, as I, before I let you go, 
does doing this job as an EMT and seeing life at, at, at a different perspective, does it change who you are? Does it change how you live? Seeing the things that I see on a nightly basis, it does change a lot of the things that I do. I'll give you a great example. I'll never ride a motorcycle. Not after some of the, not after some of the things that I see happen at nights, you know, with motorcycle <laughs> accidents and stuff. I refuse to, you know, go on a motorcycle. That'll just never happen. So as far as, you know, yeah, that, that's never going to happen. <laughs> that's never going to that, Well, that's great advice. You guys are listening to him. But, and also, I wouldn't say never ride a motorcycle. I say never ride a motorcycle without a helmet. I want to <laughs> thank you so very much. This is, going, this is riveting drama. It really, really is. This is real life. I think this is what we should watch TV for, things that will make a difference in your life where you can make a judgment call. You are such a great uh, uh, spokesperson for giving us this real light Im- information about A&E's Night Watch Nation. When do you want us to watch? So it's going to be 10 p.m. Eastern Pacific, and it's going to be on A&E this Thursday. Make sure you catch it. We will. And Jamil Cunningham, thank you for giving us an insider view into A&E's Night Watch Nation. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Have a great day.